Okay, number 14. We are told that these are two of our zeros. Now, it actually turns out that this is a fourth degree polynomial. Because remember what I told you yesterday before we started this whole thing. When you have complex, meaning imaginary, and irrational roots or zeros, they come in conjugate pairs. So if we're told negative 3 minus 2i is one of our zeros, then negative 3 plus 2i is also one of our zeros. Okay, and if negative i is one of our zeros, then positive i is one of our zeros. So we have four zeros here, and we want to write the polynomial that has these as its zeros. So let's set this up. Remember what we did yesterday. We changed our signs when we put them in the linear factor, and I'm going to pair them up, okay, as pairs. Um, I'm going to put the 3 plus or minus 2i together, and I'm going to put the plus or minus i together. Now I'm going to do the i one first, so that y'all don't totally spaz on me. Okay, remember we change the signs when we put them in our factors, but we end up with plus or minus either way, so it really doesn't matter. Okay, um, and then I'm going to do the same thing here, but remember what I did yesterday when there were like two terms in our zero? I put them in their own little set of parentheses with just a minus sign in front of it. And one more detail, just so everybody's clear, conjugate pairs, you only change the sign in front of the imaginary part or in front of the square root part. You don't change the sign of the other number. So that's negative 3 in both of those parentheses. Okay. Now, let's foil. You need water? All right, x plus i and x minus i, okay? <laughs> Foiling, x times x is x squared. The outside gives us, and I'm going to write it out even though it cancels, negative ix, the inside gives us positive ix. Those cancel. Okay, I'm trying to write out a little bit more today. Positive times a negative is a negative. i times i is i squared. Let's simplify this part first before we go on to the other part. So these cancel. i squared, since i is equal to the square root of negative 1, if we square that, that just gives us negative 1. So we are subtracting negative 1. Which subtracting a negative, same as adding a positive. Okay? So that part's not the best. Okay, let's write out the other part when we foil it. All right, x times x, x squared. The outside, we've got a negative. I'm going to put that x in front, and then we've got the negative 3 plus 2i. Technically, we could have put that in front of the x. It really doesn't matter. Okay. Then the inside, we've got a negative again and an x. And we've got negative 3 minus 2i. And then when we multiply the last, a negative times a negative is a positive. And negative 3 minus 2i, negative 3 plus 2i. I got this number in the green right now. Hopefully you can read that. Huh? Alright, so let's simplify. Let's distribute this negative x right here. Negative x times negative 3, positive 3x. Negative x times 2i, negative 2ix. Distribute the other negative x. Negative x times negative 3, plus 3x. Negative x times negative 2i, positive 2ix. Well, that's nice because that's going to cancel with that other one. And then we've got to multiply out. We've got to foil this thing at the end. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. The outside gives us negative 6i. The inside gives us positive 6i. Whoop, cancels again. Negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4. i times i is i squared. 
So a lot of stuff cancels. Okay? So let's <coughs> simplify. We have x squared plus 6x. We've got a plus 9, and then here at the end, there's negative 4i squared. i squared is negative 1, so negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. So that's plus 4 here on the end. 9 plus 4 is 13. Not as bad as the square root one, right? Oh, we're off of that. Because i squared is equal to negative 1. Anytime you see i squared, replace it with a negative 1. So then negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. Okay? And now all we have to do is multiply that binomial times that trinomial. And we're done. Okay? x squared distributed to everything. x to the fourth plus 6x cubed plus 13x squared. Distribute the one. So uh, plus x squared plus 6x plus 13. So not a whole lot of combining to do here. x to the fourth plus 6x cubed plus 14x squared plus 6x plus 13. Don't forget how we can check it. <coughs> Negative 3 minus 2i was one of our zeros. So we want to store that as our x and then type in our equation x to the fourth plus 6x cubed plus 14x squared plus 6x plus 13. What should it equal? Zero. Okay, now it doesn't equal zero for some reason, but remember what did I say? When it's got an e and it's a big negative number, that's essentially zero. That is essentially zero. Uh, now, if you're still doubting that, then check i as well. Or what was the original one? Negative i. Okay? Check negative i as well. Because you're thinking, well, I think that's supposed to be zero, but I'm not 100% sure. Plug in the other um, root or zero, whatever you want to call it. That one does give us exactly zero. I don't know why the calculator doesn't tell us that zero on this row. It is zero. It really truly really is. Um, some of these calculators are weird by the top twenty minutes. Okay, so both of those check out. That is the correct polynomial. So let's think about test taking strategies. Your final exam is multiple choice. If I give you a question like this on our test on Tuesday, it's going to be multiple choice, because otherwise it's going to take y'all ten minutes to do one problem. Okay, so use your inventory clue. Okay, plug the zeros into the equations. If it doesn't give you zero, it's not the right polynomial. Okay? If it does not give you zero, then it's not the right polynomial. Move on to another one. Um, but I do encourage you to check both zeros, okay? Just because you get zero for one of them. Um, it could be possible that more than one of the answer choices has one of those as a zero, it just doesn't have the other one as a zero. So plug them both in or plug in how many of them you have. Uh, before you pick one of your answer choices using that strategy, okay? Now, math teacher within me wants you to know how to do this, okay? Um, but reality is multiple choice. Be smart about it.